Hi, you see, I got black shirts um, last week. Just what was your reaction to seeing those handed out? Uh, yeah, I'm super proud of those guys. Uh, you know, obviously they've showed out there on the field. What uh, you know, they're ready to be a black shirt. Uh, I know they're truly honored to, you know, be a part of that tradition and the history uh, behind it. So yeah, no, I'm really happy for those guys. Coach Rule had said the defense kind of was the ones that were urging for Bashini to get the black shirt. Can you guys or can you explain a little bit as to why and specifics? I mean, just you know the the grit. I think we saw last game really uh, you know sent the message. You know in his style of play. Uh, Purdue he also had a big hit on kickoff um, on our sideline, so that was kind of the start of it. And then to see him go out there and do it again week after week, even though we've been you know. Struggling a little bit on punt, maybe you know he's still back there doing his job and doing his part. So I think that's just kind of those things that you know made made the decision. Ty, what was what was the bye like, bye week like for you? I was good. You know, I feel feel young again. Uh, I got my legs back under me. A lot of recovery stuff. Uh, Coach Rule, you know, we thought that us older guys were going to get you know taken care of a little bit, and we did in the beginning. But you know, uh, Wednesday and uh, Thursday we went you know, full pads basically going, getting ready for this week, making sure we keep that callus. Uh, a lot of extra film as well. So we'll be ready this week uh, and have a, a slight advantage with that. Hi, what do you know about Indiana? I mean, there's so little history between Nebraska and Indiana. This is just your second trip there in the 14 years you guys have been in the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, no, Indiana is a uh, tough team. Uh, you know, they have a great offense. You know, uh, those guys up front really work well together. Um, you know, as they've added a few uh, key pieces in uh, from the transfer portal this past year, uh, you know they're stout up front in the run game. They're great pass protectors uh, in the pass game. They got two great running backs, and you know the receiving core is great. Uh, quarterback, you know, is also great. Um, so it's it's really fun, and I'm excited to you know watch film on them and and see how you know we're able to challenge them and challenge ourselves for this week. How you've been around this program a long time. You've heard about the, the bowl drought and, and beating top 25 teams. What would it mean to you personally to just be able to knock out a couple of streaks like that this week? Uh, I mean, it's always a goal, right, to go in and, and you know, beat a ranked opponent. You know, there's going to come a time again where we're those guys where we're going to be ranked and people are going to be coming for us. Uh, you know, that's kind of the mentality that we've been having this season is, you know, it's time to stop being the hunter. Let's be the hunted. And, you know, with a uh, T Knight's done has given us a quote, you know, do you think Kobe, even though he was the hunted, do you think he was actually hunted? No, he was a hunter hunting the hunter, hunting the hunter himself, right? So I think it's just kind of, you know, that kind of uh, mentality, mind mind switch, whatever you want to call it, uh, going into these types of games. Everyone saw the emotions uh, after you closed down that Rutgers game with James Williams on the sideline and, and Coach Knight. And what job has, has <coughs> T Knight done with your room? And sort of building that camaraderie and how you've seen that grow. T Knight's built, you know, a great relationship, I think, you know, individually with everybody, but even as a whole, creating this kind of brotherhood between, you know, a bunch of guys who may have came from different places to we've we've molded so well into being one unit type of deal. So to see this success that James has had, you know, from him going to basically a, a camp tryout to now, you know, being tied to having four sacks this season, just in his second season as a Husker. I mean, just to watch, you know, the hard work, hard work that they put us through, you know, year in and year out to finally come out there and put it on paper and put it on the film. It, it's awesome. From your viewpoint on the other side of the ball, what have you thought about the way that, that Dylan has embraced a leadership role? It's got to be a hard thing to do as a as a 19 year old when there's guys with your experience and, and age who are who are there and, and obviously ready and, and, and filling those positions also? Well, what I love about Dylan is that, you know, yes, he's embraced that leadership role and, you know, head on, you know, with the challenges that he's faced, you know, learning everything for the first time. But he's also listening to the older guys, I think, as well. Uh, you know, I know he's listened to Heinrich. I know Heinrich's taking him under his wing. But even on the defensive side of the ball, you know, he's come over and talking to us, to us older guys on, you know, what we might be thinking or what we what we would do. So I think he's just, you know, trying to be a sponge and soak up all this information and get out of us older guys before we head out. Did you have any idea you were going to you would get that from him? I mean, you knew he had a good arm. You could see that. But did you did you as an older player on the team have any idea that you would get um, that that kind of um, leadership from a freshman? 
I mean, I've seen it before. Uh, you know, it, it's rare, right? But like to watch, you know, I think, I think Coach Rule has even mentioned it, you know, his work ethic, you know, you know, how much time and effort he puts into everything, you know, the care and the passion that he has for this program. I mean, it just kind of goes hand in hand. He's definitely going to have a part in that leadership then if you're going to invest that much time and have that much passion into it. So, you know, I, th I think, you know, I don't think you, you know you expect it of him, but I'm not surprised either. I think after the Rutgers game, Coach Rule said you get out what you put in, and you guys put in a lot that week into that Rutgers game. Have you seen that sort of carry over, that momentum of that work? Yeah, that's a reminder every, every period, uh, every scout period, uh, when we all huddle up together is just – you know, reminder that we're we're going balls to the wall, 100 percent. You know, if it has to go to live, then we're going to live. But you know, we're treating the scout team like it's the opponent. Right, playing uh, in the red zone defensively, what's the mindset of this team? What's it like in the huddle? Because so far this season, opponents have been in the red zone 13 times. You've allowed only six touchdowns. None of those were rushing. So what's behind the success there? They don't get in. Plain and simple. That's just mind mindset mentality. That's what we tell each other when we're in the huddle. They don't get in. We go out there and work together. There's been 13 guys on the defensive line that have played 50 or more snaps this year. Uh, obviously, I think you played the most of them, but are there ever times when you're out there and you're not sure who's exactly next to you because they're rotating so many of them? Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes you just got to get down uh, and, you know, it might not get a call or you get the call and then, he, you know, the guy's coming in late or whatever. So you just kind of make do. Uh, figure it out. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate it. Thank you.